In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness questions and in the introductory portion Surprise! of this episode, we have a lot of fun mentioning articles, current events, talking about our lives. We mentioned one of our sponsors. So here's what we talked about in this episode of Mind Pump. We start out by mentioning fake health. Uh, these are people who <laughs> talk about wanting to be healthy, but in reality, their lifestyles uh, are anything but. Yeah. Then we talked about the show Ancient Healers. Aliens. Uh, apparently, one of the hosts on there was a bodybuilder or a big fan of bodybuilding shows. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Then we talked about old TV commercials. We went down uh, memory lane for that one. Then we talked about the, the Kansas versus Kansas State brawl, the basketball game that ended terribly in a big fight. Um, Adam brought up his Viore sweats and how that's probably why so many women signed up for his, his boot camp class. Yeah. By the way, Viore is the maker of amazing athleisure wear. Uh, and we have a mind pump discount for you if you want to go check it out. Here's what you do. Go to Viore Clothing. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code that's listed on the page for 25% off. Then I talked about Chris Hemsworth and how he's going to be on a new show where he tests all these different ways to biohack his body. He's so handsome. Adam mentioned F45, how Mark Wahlberg bought into the company, and then we compared it to Orange Theory, which one's better, bigger, more successful. Then we talked about The Biggest Loser. I mentioned a study on a brand new immune cell that seems to attack all cancers. That's pretty awesome, which led me to talk about another article I read connecting thyroid cancers from certain individuals to their cell phones. Then we got into the fitness question. The first question was, this person wants to know what our opinion is of biggest loser challenges in the workplace. This is when groups of people tend to get together at work. And they say, hey, let's see who can lose the most weight in 90 days. Are those things hey, good? Hey, Bill, you look fat. Let's do something about are it. Are they bad? Uh, so we give our opinion. The next question, this person says, what's the best way to train the abs? Isometrically? concentrically or eccentrically. So they're referring to the three different types of rep uh, reps that you could do when you work out. So we discussed those three and their value. The next question, this person wants to know what our thoughts are on trap bar deadlifts. So a trap bar deadlift is a deadlift done with what's known as a trap bar. You stand inside of it, hands on the sides or handles on the sides. They're getting really popular nowadays, so we give our opinion. And the final question this person wants to know what's best for overall muscular health, stretching, foam rolling, or mobility work. Uh, also, this month, MAPS HIT is 50% off. So HIT is high-intensity interval training. You may have heard of it. Uh, it's got a lot of press because it's been shown to burn a lot of body fat or a lot of calories in a short period of time. In fact, a 20-minute HIT session can be as effective as a 40 or 60 minute traditional workout session in terms of fat burning or calorie burning. So it is very effective. Unfortunately, HIIT training mm. uh, needs to be done properly. You need to do it right. So. There is a specific way to do it. If you do it wrong, you'll either hurt yourself or get no results. So we created MAPS HIT. We put together a high intensity interval training program done the right way. In our program, you get your exercises, your reps, your sets, you get video demos, you get some flow sessions, which help work with mobility. It is a complete program. The entire program is half off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Back now. Operators are standing by. Dude, I was. Uh, I just remembered a, uh, something you posted reminded me of a story, Adam. What's up? Years ago... I went to Vegas uh, with a couple buddies of mine, and then they had some other people that they knew that you know kind of came along or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we go out, we're all you know partying or whatever, and uh, you know some of these guys are doing drugs. And I remember later, allegedly, yeah, no, I saw them doing drugs. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah, they were, there's no allegedly. Confirmed. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they were doing, they were doing, they were doing cocaine, and mm -hmm. uh, and then she wasn't making powder. And then I mean? at one know. point in the night, I'm like, hey, let me go get you a drink. You know, I saw you drinking, what was that, uh, Jack and Diet Coke? And the guy goes, no, 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 no. He goes, Diet Coke? He goes, that shit will kill you, man. He goes, give me regular Coke. <laughs> and I, was, I thought he was joking. I started laughing. He looked at me serious. I'm like, bro, I just saw you doing yeah. cocaine. Yeah. You're not drinking Diet Coke? There, there's levels. Oh, uh, you're talking about the, the tweet that I shared uh, from the kid, uh, Matty Fasaro. He shared a, a tweet that said, um, 
you know, people having are vaping CBD from gas stations and going on ayahuasca retreats with no worries, but they're scared to drink a diet soda. Yes. I died laughing. You know, it's so true though, you know? That, or it's That like, is the trend. Or you go through like a drive through McDonald's and uh, and you do like, oh, I'll have a Big Mac, large fry, a McFlurry, and a Diet Coke, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the fake uh, fake health. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No, no, no. I had another, but oh, no, I don't want to take supplements. Those are dangerous. I'm like, yeah. bro, you- do drugs off the streets, <laughs> yeah. and you're afraid to take creatine. <laughs> yeah, you got to get your priorities. I need that, to go on a psychotic voyage. That conversation reminds me of one too. That this morning I got a bunch of people sharing this in my DM, so of course I have to go look. Uh, and I've been people have shared this guy before with me, and I've I, I can't get through a full video that he does. Um, he's got quite a bit of. I think he has a, a big YouTube following, maybe. Uh, his name's Tony Huge. Oh gosh, are you familiar with this guy? Yes, I am. Okay, he's like he's like openly talk. Here, I'll, I'll say something nice before I, I talk shit. Mm. Uh, you know, I Tony do. Huge. I do appreciate people that openly share. Like, I, 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 I'd rather somebody openly share about steroids, talk about it, the pros, the cons, everything, versus the person who lies and pretends like they're not on one and they're mm. on gear. So there's my nice thing. Uh, but. <laughs> He's bashing vegan, and you know, I think we've openly talked about how, you know, for the majority, we're not pro-vegan. Sure. Uh, but, and I think the person who shared this with me thought maybe that I was going to jump on board. Being someone who's openly talked about taking steroids uh, and also openly talked about not being, you know, pro-vegan for most people, you know, that I would agree with this guy because he goes on this rant about how terrible uh, veganism is. But then he goes on to say that taking steroids is healthier than than being vegan. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is why this is, you know what people Sounds like a jabroni. Way to wait, you know what my bodybuilding community I'm always defending, you know, I just can't defend this. You can't, dude, the, you're he, making us look bad, bro. This is why people don't take uh <laughs> bodybuilding or bodybuilders their nutrition advice and training. That's why the mainstream or their health them, advice. Period. Yeah, they don't take him seriously because here you have a guy, if you know who who this guy is, He's obvious, blatant, terrible body image issues. Terrible. Guy uses every drug under the sun. He's very insecure. You could tell by the way he talks about things. He acts like he knows a lot. So he acts like he's a scientist, super smart. Uh, but he's not. He's a bro scientist. And then he makes a claim like that. And it's like, no, that's not true. And you're stupid. You're making people look, you're making, uh, you're, you're making the bodybuilding community look terrible because of the stuff you're saying. It's so, well, so annoying. You're, you're, you're justifying your own bad habits right oh, you know gosh. it's like and here again i you know, we've openly talked about you know veganism where none of us by any means are are pro vegan and i i think for the majority of people it is a terrible diet but i also think for a majority of people taking steroids is a terrible idea too <laughs> yeah you know there's a there's a small percentage of people that have low hormone levels that should be on hrt and there's a difference between hrt trt and taking enough steroids to be a 250 pound monster. Right, right, right. You know, like this guy walks it's around. It's not the same. It's not the same no, at all. No. You know, you're, you're, it, there's a, there's a big <laughs> difference between taking a dose that keeps you, you know, around you the, the top of the, the normal levels and even maybe pushing you like a little bit over that, right? And then there's yeah. taking enough to be ginormous. And it's like, come on, guy. So even, 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 even then, you know, when you're taking uh, vitamin D ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you're taking exogenous uh, hormones, because testosterone levels fluctuate and they fluctuate based on your lifestyle. They fluctuate based off of time of day. When you take exogenous testosterone, it doesn't do that. It just stays high all the time. And right, so you blunt your body's natural signals that are trying to tell you, hey, you didn't get very good with sleep last week. Right, hey, you're not getting enough of this. And there may be a, I mean, I would. This is me speculating, so I have no nothing to support this. It's just me, you know, thinking out loud. But I would imagine that there may be a protective effect to your body lowering its tes testosterone when you're, uh, depending on the type of behaviors and lifestyle that you have. So if your natural, if your lifestyle is causing your testosterone levels to drop. Let's say you lack sleep, stress, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I I wonder if it's a part of a protective mechanism. And if you're keeping testosterone high, dude, 
it may not I, be a I've good idea. I thought about this too, in terms of like your agitation level. Like, and it's not, not, not to say that like roid rage is this crazy thing or anything, but like in terms of like being at a high level of testosterone and then having like little irritants, like you find like, like louder <laughs> and louder. Like, say you're, yeah, you're a new parent or something, and like you're just like in the state of like constant stress you can't leave from. Like, I could see that being a problem. I, I found it was really interesting that Generation Iron shared it too. It's like, I, I guess though they, you know, I mean, they did the last. What's the guy's name too that they they try and say is like the the new Arnold or whatever. Oh, I know you're talking the dude from Australian dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. made the last video all about him. I guess they lost most credibility for me when they did that. So, but and then they go and they repost. Something he's, like, uh, he's I, you know, I don't want to talk too bad about. It. I mean, he's he's just a. Well, no, you you bring up a good point because there's. <clears throat> You know, uh, Ben Pikulski, good friend of ours, uh, Flex Wheeler has become a good friend of ours. And there's there's people in the bodybuilding community that I think that are putting out good information and sharing great stories and that are icons. And, uh, and you know, I, I think there's I think it's a sport and I think like any sport, you can play it and, you know, do your best to stay as healthy as possible or understand that you're, you're pushing the body's boundaries and. You know, I I really appreciate people that communicate that well. And then there's this, then there's the other side. Then, you know, that are that I think give bodybuilding a really bad rap because well, I think to the average person who looks at people in that space, it, it the the they visually you can clearly see the body image issues. You really can. I mean, mm. If you ask, give you an example, okay? Being fit, muscular, lean, most people of the opposite sex would consider that attractive. Okay. Show the average female picture of pro bodybuilder and see what they say. And the average woman will say, it's disgusting. It doesn't look good. It's not attractive. Now, bodybuilders aren't training to look attractive. But my point is, there's a reason why it looks, it doesn't look good to the average person. It's because it's, it's obviously poor health. It's obvious poor health. So th those people, when they give health advice, it's hard to listen to them. And, and, mm. and oftentimes their advice is, like this guy, Tony Huge. Yeah. It's like, wow, you just you're you're doing everybody no favors, dude. No. Well, speaking of weird, you know, advice, uh, strange advice. Did you know that like one of the main guys on Ancient Aliens, it was a part of the bodybuilding community at one point. What? Not to do with the hair. Is yes, it? yes, Giorgio, the no, crazy one. The not. yeah, yeah. I guess like it, he was like passionate about bodybuilding and like uh, promoted a lot of like uh, not. It's the Olympia, right? That's the one with yeah. Like, yeah. So that that was the main one that he was like promoting it and like like. Producing it and all that, and so he was like a big fan of bodybuilding. I had no idea. No way. Yeah. yeah. Remind me what, what's ancient. But it aliens. makes perfect sense. So it's a show where they is look, this like a Discovery? It, what is it? Yeah, it was History on the, Channel. The, History hilarious is on the History Channel, right? Okay. Like something you're like totally not historical, but uh, they throw all kinds of imagery out there from around the world where it's unexplained, like old monuments and things that oh, okay. like, yeah, like and they make like the like Stonehenge or something. Yeah, exactly. Stonehenge, yeah. the pyramids, you know. Whatever, like all these different uh, ruins, and they tie it all to like like aliens in the past giving us uh, knowledge to to build these things and help us out. Yeah, so I'll it's, give you it's, it's it's like one of my favorite uh, pastimes to go home. Oh, and watch dude, that. Oh, it's like God. something to smoke weed. It's yes, one hundred percent. It's it's a stoner uh, show, one hundred percent. Yeah, there's this like I'll give you an example. There was I don't know where this this these people were, but there was a a, a society of people. And we have evidence of this. And what they used to do is as when they were babies, they would strap a board to their forehead, to the baby's forehead, in yeah, order to, to shape, elongate their in order to elongate and shape skull. the head so that it looked like this. Mm -hmm. And so then they have pictures of that and they're like, These are they were trying yeah, to they're emulating the gods, which they, were aliens that were telling them how to uh, build these structures. Because you know, because create you know, societies. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. we know that we know aliens have long heads. <laughs> you know? he's, he's just got all these memes out there like <laughs> Like he just ex can explain everything with just one word, aliens. Yeah, yeah. And, and like another one, like there's these pictures of like these hieroglyphics, and it looks like from our eyes, it looks like a person riding a helicopter, or it looks like an astronaut. Yeah. So like, how did they know yeah. that the helicopters would exist? Like, we, they did it. I think I, it just made. I fucking something. love it, dude. It's, it's so good. <laughs> it is seriously like my favorite thing uh, ever. To it's watch. so good. You know yeah. what else is fun? And it costs a hundred thousand dollars to produce one of those episodes. Really? What? Yes. Why so much? That's crazy. I guess all the different graphics and like the way they dramatize it and, uh, you know, like maybe they have to buy rights to all the images and videos and stuff they use. Is that a know. lot though? I don't know how much a normal show would cost to produce. Yeah. 
I don't know, but <laughs> you know, I was it digging might not into be that much because I was like, man, this is this is some crazy stuff they're putting yeah. out there. I love it. So you know what else is fun that I did uh, a few days ago? So when I was a kid, I don't know if you guys did this. When I when my dad would take me to the, you know, Blockbuster Video, or back there, back then the one around here was called uh, uh, One Hour Photo Drive Up. That was the name of the place that. Had rentals or whatever. Oh, God. You remember one hour photos? Do you remember that? Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my dad would take me and I'd go hang out with him while he'd pick a movie. And every once in a while, I would be able to pick a kid's movie, right? So, I must have been, I must have been 10 or 11, maybe. But every once in a while, I'd sneak away and I'd walk down the horror aisle. And I used to look at the boxes of horror movies. I yeah. love the imagery of those old movies, those VHS movies, the horror movies. So, I went online because I was telling my son about this. And I'm like, dude, back then, that's how you pick movies. Like yeah. the imagery that's on the what box. Sold you. Yeah, yeah, that's how you picked a movie. Yeah, yeah. You know. And I said, uh, and I used to love going through the horror aisle because it would scare the crap out of me. But I loved it, and I'd yeah. look at all the scary. Dude. So I pulled up old eighties horror, you know, movie imagery. Oh my god, they were terrible. Yeah, they're, they're so... awful. You get like trees, like penetrating people, yeah, and, like crazy stuff. Gory, yeah. gory yeah. shit. Uh, oh, dude. Speaking of the 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 one hour thing, like, do you remember? Like how much of a panic you were in when like you took a picture of your girlfriend or something that was like scantily clad or like like naked or and then you'd have somebody else develop your pictures for you. <laughs> yeah, that's like it. oh my god, I can't believe we did that back then. Yeah, that's like, what, the- well, like you're like ah, I guess they'll see. They'll get you know they'll get a, a nice little show. That's how it worked. Back yeah, then. and how many how many employees probably saved the a double of that 100%, shit? You know, you know if you worked there, you were some pervert. And you kept all I, that shit. Yeah, dude, for like, sure you did. I knew a guy that did that. I knew oh, a guy that developed. Man, of course. Course. He developed photos. And of course you make an extra bastard. one, dude. And I of asked course. him, I asked him, I'm like, do you guys like see? And he goes, of course, of course we do. And I'm like, what kind of pictures do you see? He goes, you have no idea, bro. Pa- naked pictures, like crazy stuff, like, parties. Yeah. He's like, we all see it, you know? <clears throat> yeah, <that's laughs> Put in your envelope. You know, talking about Blackmail. 80s movies. I So that's so, so funny you brought this up. So this weekend we were when we were all hanging out, we were talking about, uh, like, so the kids, right? Uh, you know, his kids are now, my, my two best friends, they're getting to the place where their kids now watch cartoons or whatever. And you and you guys know this having young kids. It's so and I remember this as a kid myself you, that when you like something, you will watch that same oh, movie over and over. And I yeah. remember as a kid, so oh, I, it, I it's crazy. I got to be somewhere. I have to be between the ages of I want to say five to seven when this was. And the movie Rad. I've talked about oh, it God. before. Yeah. Right? So yeah. all time favorite movie. Send me an angel. <clears throat> yes. We were watching. <laughs> so we were talking about 80s movies and talking about Rad. And so it sent me down the rabbit hole of like looking it all up and like where are they all now? And, you know, so the, the movie is, uh, I think Eddie Fiola is the name of the BMX racer who is the stunt double in that movie. And so, and they're actually launching a company uh, this year, 2020, and it's to remake all those that that style of a bike oh and, sick and, and, no totally sick right yeah. so and then i go look wow, i like go the front pegs and everything right yes the, so i go looking up uh looking up youtube videos on him and up pops this 25th anniversary of rad he he shows up to a high school for the 25th anniversary of rad this dude is and he's older than we are so he's in his 50s and he re- reenacts the sent me by an angel scene. The spinning on. Oh, the- bro, he does the whole. It's it was it's dope. What? I'm gonna put it up on. I'll have I'll have Doug look up. Oh, uh, what a champ! Eddie Fiola, uh, rad. Um, uh, 25th anniversary. If you po- post that on YouTube, you'll probably find some of that. But he recreates, he does it over again. That whole scene where you know that scene when they're in that when they're high school, him and his girlfriend, and they're doing the little the dance on the bike. Send send uh, send me an angel yeah. is the song playing. Right. I, haven't, I haven't watched that movie still. You yeah. haven't seen it? Nah. Ah, dude, it's such. I a, never watched it. I never even knew it existed. But I was so I was actually really impressed. I mean, there was uh, there was about two moves that were like really tough that he did that he kind of like lost it a little bit but for the most part he nailed Now this. was that the movie that you watched the most the, over and over again? For sure. Yeah. 100% I did watched Did you ever ride a bike, Sal? So? Did I ride? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Hey, can you ride? <laughs> like I didn't know who was ever asked Yeah, you. can you ride a bike? <laughs> <laughs> yes. There yes. it is. That's it right there. Yes, I can, can ride a bike. Can you ride a bike? Yeah, yeah look at that. Wow. Yeah. No, cuz dude, this spawned like a whole generation of like oh, everybody, BMXing. Everybody's bike was like this. Yeah, right. I had a bike like this, yeah, dude. I, I, I had a mongoose, didn't you guys? Didn't you guys yeah, have BMX? Yeah, 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 no, mongoose, mongoose was, was even more high quality, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. The sick yeah. bike, so yeah, I, I don't know. I literally got went down like hours of going through the stuff, found their website. I was like looking oh, at all their wow. shit. Yeah. What but was I, what was your movie, Justin? Was there a movie you watched over and over again as a kid? Um, 
Yeah, you I mean, Star besides Wars. Star Wars, it was probably uh, like I think it was. I wanted to say Willow, but I don't think it was even Willow. But it was something like that. It was like a uh, like it's never ending story. I think. Oh yeah, I think that, that was, was the jam. And you know, like it, that was the one that would come on all the time when I was sick, and I would just put that on between that and even Big Trouble Little China. That was oh, when I was older, though. Yeah, you know, a little bit older. So I watched out. that one a lot, and uh, you know what movie I watched like crazy? And part of the reason was I liked it because it was fantasy, but also because it was one of the few VHS movies that we owned, and it's because my mom uh, recorded it off the TV. So I re- I even memorized the commercials, by the way, because yeah. it recorded everything. Yeah, yeah. So as a kid, I would watch this movie over and over again, and I'd memorize not only the movie but all the commercials. To this day, yeah. I've actually tried finding those commercials on YouTube to see if they, you know. Like, remember know. the old, like, uh, McDonald's chicken nuggets where they're, like, little, like, puppets? And yeah. And they would, like, slide down these things. Do you, I remember those commercials do you remember, vividly. Do you remember the Dominoes? Uh, yeah, m- Avoid the Noid. Avoid the Noid. Do you remember that? <laughs> avoid no, the noid. no, no, no. Remind gotta, they should bring that back. He no, was rem- this dude that yeah. was weird, and it was Avoid the Noid. Like, He's yeah. like a little, like, jester, like, yeah. little annoying fucker. Uh, or the, or uh, Max Hedron from uh, the Pepsi yeah. guy. Uh, 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 that yeah, guy, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so uh, Clash of the Titans. You guys uh, remember the original, cla- uh, the old, yeah. not the old Clash of the Titans? Yeah, yeah. That was so they remade good. that in what, like two oh, two thousand yeah, something, right? They, Crap. They, uh, like yeah, the they did that was with the Golden Owl, right? The Metal Owl. It was. Yeah. So I watched the TV version of it, and then when I got a little bit older, I got the actual VHS, and I didn't realize there's boobs in it. Wow. They didn't show it on the TV. That's then amazing. I got older and I was like, oh, dang. Dude, 80s <laughs> movies were amazing for that. Like Porky's and like all these like, <laughs> yes. just, like, just randomly yeah. all of a sudden. It's oh, like naked dude, women. I do remember this commercial now. The yeah. Noid, bro. The Noid. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I had a t-shirt with him on it. Yeah. And I thought it was the coolest <laughs> shirt did ever. Too. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yes. You know, you're, yeah, my, you know, my, you're a nerd just like uh, I am. Of Justin. course I am. Dude. You know, the, the skill you. that you have, which is so funny because my my two best friends, Jared and Justin, Justin, my my best friend, is just like you, Justin, that has this weird ability yeah. that he could take with the name. a commercial yeah. like that and he could still do it. He could do the whole, the, he could do the jingle, he could sing the jingle, uh-huh. he can, and, yeah. you jingles, know, what, jingles totally got me. You know, I, I wonder if it's like a musical thing because they always had music that goes to it and that you have, you're, you're musically inclined, so is he. So yeah, it, I pay attention Music to that runs in his anything. family, he's yeah. talented, he picked the guitar up like, just like five, six years ago and could play it right away. Yeah. And his dad was a big time drummer and in a band. So I wonder if there has something to do no, there, with it. There has to be. I mean, you could go all the way back to Ireland where like one of our uh, distant uh, ancestors, whatever, was like part of uh, like one of the, the orchestras there and like was the main uh, um, violinist. And and it like, there's a lot in, in my grandma and my mom and like everybody in my family are really like yeah. musical. Yeah. But do you think or, that's- Or because you watch a lot of TV. <laughs> and I watch that. See, I watch a lot of TV yeah. though too, and like I can, he'll do the jingle, and I re- remember the commercial, but not like he does. Uh-huh. Like he remember, he could sing it to me with the tune and the beat to it. And uh, what I I've come to because I think okay, if you're like you're the only other person I've ever met that has the same skill, where on the spot you can say, "Hey, Crest commercial, 1984." All right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then like all of a sudden sing the jingle or whatever. Yeah. I, it has to be something about with music, right? That has to be why you guys have this ability to do that. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, I music no definitely yeah. improves memory. That's for sure. I mean, it's one of the one of the. the that's how we passed information down was is, singing through songs. Yeah, right? before we were recording it, um, it was song. And and anytime you sing something, you remember. That's why you learn the ABCs with the song. Mm-hmm. Till this day, if you say the ABCs, you probably are Sing doing it. You're doing the. T- By the way, did you guys know the tune for a- the ABCs? The same tune is for uh, is it Little Star? What's that song? Yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Twinkle. twinkle. Yeah. It's the same song. Yep, it's just different words. bro. So my the knowledge is coming out like crazy. Anyway, hey, did you guys see television? Tell a vision. Oh shit! I know, right, Paul? Check. Yeah, did you guys know? That blew my mind. I just figured out today that a cigarette is named a cigarette because it's a small cigar. Wow, that's why. That's Rhett. Yeah. What do they call? You what do they? That, what yeah. do they call it in Europe? It's got a different name. It's got like a. It sounds like a. Perverted. No, you don't want to say. It. Yes, <laughs> it's no, a fag. No, no, no. Yes. That's what they say in the UK. <laughs> oh, it's UK. They says UK, that. They oh, it's somebody. Yeah. yeah, somebody like came up up behind me and like was like trying to bum a cigarette, right? And then they said that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like bum a fag. I'm like. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have a rumble. Yeah, yeah. yeah but speaking he was just of, being, he was just being uh, hey, polite. speaking of rumbles, did you guys see the Kansas and Kansas State brawl? 
You know oh, what? The basketball. I, I sent it over to the I main did because you sent it to us. Okay, you yeah. watched it. So, that was yeah. ugly, dude. Bro, so here's the thing, though. Like, so I uh, I think the number one comment on there, Swaggy P, Nick Young got on there and said something. And he says, uh, the guy who's, who swatted him, the swat and the stare down was necessary. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, of course, it stirred up all kinds of controversy. Or whose fault is it? Who did, who did what? Blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. There's like an unsaid rule in basketball. Like, if you're whooping the shit out of a team, yeah. Like they were. Kansas was beating Kansas State by almost 30 points. There, I think there was less than 15 seconds on the clock. You know, when there's less than... You, you let, let the clock burn out. Right. right. You, you cross half court so you don't get a penalty for, for not passing half court. You sit there and you just kind of dribble You dribble the timeout. Mm-hmm. And the, the team who lost normally just lets it happen. Gracefully. Yeah. Because yeah. even if you were move to... Because even if you stole the, Right. If you stole the ball, shot a, shot two threes in a row in that 15 seconds, it doesn't matter. You still lose by 15 plus mm-hmm. points, right? So... Yeah. At the guy's kind of just dribbling it and letting the clock go out, and the dude steals the ball and takes off. But the guy who got it stolen from him actually recovers from the steal, runs down court, jumps, and swats the Tomahawk them. swats, swats them, the dude. fuck yeah. out of the guy. Yeah. And Get then, out of my house. And then stands over the top of him and stares him down. And then out this yeah. brawl happens. But again, I... I you know I the guy who who did that and a lot of people think that that was fucked up or wrong for him to do that but hey dude that's you get that's what you get you, plus yeah. it's not plus it's you're, you're playing a game you swat him that's part of the game staring him down it was big clean deal. too he didn't even hit him or yeah anything. yeah big deal a fight like yeah. that's so embarrassing no, you know you know why though I mean they're already salty that they lost yeah, the right. game totally and so now sure. they they find an opportunity to take it out and it's rivals Kansas Kansas State's always been a rival yeah, yeah so, so I mean it's again but still, it, it's not promoting it yeah. but like, yeah like I I could see like. Yeah, doing something like that, I'm, I'm totally on the side of like, dude. If you want to, if you want to dribble up and you get swatted, you get swatted. Like you right. got to deal with that. But still, fighting. Come on, guys. You're you you're, you're adult that. males. Yes. Uh, many of you are trying to get into the NBA. <laughs> you're gonna fight. Well, no, that's it a really not worth That's it. a really good point that my buddy brought up. He's like, how stupid is that? Like, this, it's gonna that, tarnish their whole career. One hundred percent. I mean, that's the type of thing that'll they'll drop you five, ten positions uh, in draft time. Totally. You know, if you, a team sees that, that oh, okay, that's the type of kid. This is going to be where right. he you know gets all pissed off and then starts a brawl i mean there was people picking trash cans you know, up the, and hitting each other it's it so crazy. Crazy. one of the num- one of the, the the number one best qualities of a good strong man is discipline and part of that discipline is to restrain yourself from acting like an asshole yeah he didn't get attacked but he got to stand up and now i gotta throw throw my fists that's lack of discipline. That's a very yeah, a poor there's example. There's a time and a place, you yeah, know. That, like I, I love, I love hockey for this because it's very black yeah, and white. Yeah. You know, it's like that's part of the game. You, you just hit my goalie. I'm gonna like beat the shit. Yeah, out that's of part you. of the game. And it's though. like it's, okay, it's, now you can go in the penalty box and rest. Bad parenting. That's what I think. Yeah, bad parenting. Yeah. It's bad. Bad parenting. That's because as I was taught as a kid. Now mine didn't come from my parents. Mine came from good coaches. There's like when you win, you win in class, dude. You don't when you score. You don't spike the ball. You don't yeah. talk Dude, shit. sportsmanship. Like right, there's like yeah. the, the way you talk shit is a scoreboard. Like you, yeah. you 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 play to win. You play you play hard. You play aggressive, but you don't. It's you don't, honorable. Yeah, it's honorable. Right, and it's those are the old those are the actually the old rules of the battlefield when <clears throat> when they would meet each other and fight. There was a level of respect. Yeah. Even even today in certain circles, uh, what's that that movie I saw a documentary I watched a long time ago? Knuckle. I think it was called with the their oh, Irish travelers. Yes, yes, I watched part of that. You mentioned that to me. And before. they fist that. fight to to yeah. to solve their issues or whatever among their community. But there's a lot of honor around it. Like you're not allowed to kick, bite. There's no illegal holds. You stop if you beat the guy up. You shake hands or whatever. Right. And um, you know that kind of stuff. I think it shows yeah, a lot you of squash discipline. disputes. Like as long as like everybody yeah. like agrees to the terms. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the, you know, fighting reminds me of Rocky and your your love for that. Yeah, and great I think movie. You'll, you'll oh, appreciate. My, my kids love Rocky, by the way. Do they, they really? Them. Yeah, yeah kids. We've made it all the way through four. So yeah. uh, you, they watched all four. Yeah. Oh man, I bet yeah. that changed their the life. The fifth one, nah. But yeah, yeah that's so you, you'll good. appreciate my Viore commercial today because I know that you got, I know Justin, you're the big Chino pant guy, right? Yeah. What are you? I don't know what pants you I'm like. The big mo- Chino. I guy. like the Chinos also. Yeah. So you yeah. two both are. That's I think that's what you guys are wearing right now. Yeah. Right? So these are the Balboa pants. Oh, I have a pair of those. And these are now my my new favorite. Yeah, pants. those are this, this and the Sunday joggers are the two most comfortable pairs that they have, and the pairs that I mm-hmm. I rock back and mm-hmm. forth. So is that more of like a sweat kind of a feel to them, like in terms of like is it yeah. like warmer? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a little. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit warmer than like the chino pants, mm-hmm. uh, and it, but it's a different material than the Sunday joggers. The Sunday joggers are more like your, you know, 
Lulu type of yeah. kind of spandex type sweats. This is yeah. more those are like, a little thicker. Yeah, they're thicker. They're more like traditional sweats, but then they're tapered at the now, bottom. Now, what, what's the deal with? I, I like those, by the way. I have a pair of those too. What's the deal with with? with I, have you guys heard like women make comments about men wearing sweats? Like, oh, when you wear sweats, I can see whatever. Oh, have you heard this? Before? Gray, yeah. gray sweats. Uh, yeah, apparently. What is they're, that? They're checking out our packages. Is that what it is? <laughs> I heard somebody say. That. Is that a thing? <laughs> I know. I was like in a video a long time ago, and somebody like circled that. I'm like, no, what? It, how it, dare you? Katrina used to give me up. So, um, you know, Katrina and I go back 10 years, right? So we we were, she used to go to my boot camp classes that I used to teach. And she would razz me all the time about wearing like boxer brief, boxer brief underwear and gray sweatpants. Yeah. It was like. Because you could see that. You yeah, could see yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah she's like, you it's know like why all these ladies rap. resign, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, because I'm a great trainer. Why? Yeah. She goes, no, it's because what you wear in the morning. I'm like, where? I throw on a pair of sweats and a t-shirt and maybe a hoodie. I go. Yeah. And she's, but, but she's like, why do you tuck your shirt in though? Why don't you let your shirt hang yeah, out yeah, in front? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's the deal? Yeah. 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 So, did you guys hear about this new show that Chris uh, Hemsworth is going to be in? Oh dear God! So uh, he's it's now teaching the Thor. world. He's now teaching the world fitness. No, yeah, yeah well, no. Well, Thor can do no wrong. And I'm extremely I mean, yeah, I'm jealous. Guy. I hate celebrities that try to teach people fitness because oftentimes <laughs> they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But anyway, it's a new show. Uh, he's going to. He volunteered to be a human guinea pig for a National Geographic docu series titled Limitless. So the show is called Limitless. He's going to be the human guinea pig, and basically he's going to undergo a series of challenges that will explore different ways humans can live longer in new in this scientific or science-based quote docuseries. So it's all about like hacking, like these, uh, like you know, is these, it biohack stuff? biohacking stuff. Uh, okay. but he's going to go through all the experiments on the show. Oh, so it's he's become, trying to take over a Greenfield's job. Huh? Yeah, you know, you just reminded Doug. Could you look this up? F forty five cells to. Um, why can I not think Mark, of it? Uh, yes. Marky Mark. Is that true? Yeah. Did you read he's that too? He's part of it. Yeah, he's, he's a part owner. Okay, he's part owner. Yeah, I don't, really? think, I don't think he bought the whole company. I don't know. I'm, 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 I might you, be talking about You heard that also then. Really, okay, yeah. so I heard this, but I, and I've been meaning to look it up. I didn't think about it until you just said that, So. Mark Wahlberg back. Yeah, because he was promoting franchise. it uh, because he went through it and all that and has got back in shape and that was all just like a oh, promotional this happened, stunt. Th- wow, how did I just now hear about this? This happened in March. Yeah, he's, oh, it's a, he, he's a minority stake in F45. Roughly $450 million? It's uh No, valued. The whole thing. Oh, the value. Is valued at $450 million. Wow. So is this the next competitor to Orange Theory? Is that like the, the, uh, the new wave? Well, I don't know. Let's look up which one's worth more. I would F45 might be worth more. Than Orange Theory, four hundred fifty million. Uh, you think that Orange Theory's reached a billion already? Uh, I think it's more than. Didn't we wow. see something that said that they? Maybe were you could look that up, Doug. Look up uh, you Orange know, Theory's Orange Theory value and F forty five value. So that must be an East Coast thing because I've never seen. Oh no, they're here. They're here really? in San Jose. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they're they're I'm oblivious. They're all they're all over here in San Jose, and uh, you know a lot of the coaches that were teaching Orange Theory of a hop ship and doing F. Oh, it is exceeds one billion. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, they exceeded that in two thousand. 2018. Yeah, they're crushing. Dang. Holy shit! So they're okay. twice as big as. Okay, uh, so well, no, was that so? Is F45 valued at 450? That was what it was. Yeah. Okay, so that's what that article. Oh, said. so they are. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a well, sim- similar model. They're all yeah. intensity based. All of it is an answer to CrossFit, right? Yeah. So I mean, you can we can thank CrossFit for the this opening the door. Yeah, the small box group class. And it's brilliant. It's uh, you know we've talked about it countless times on the show. Uh, why those things, those models are so successful, and it's the community that it creates. When you do a small gym like that, it creates. I mean, I remember being at Orange Theory and seeing, you know, everybody like that would come to class. It's a social thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, it more than anything else. I mean, ninety mm. percent of the people ain't getting the results. Mm-hmm. You know, they, and if they are, they end up going right back after they fall off mm-hmm. for a few months, anyways. But it, it it became like a you know meet you at class tomorrow. Yeah, it's an at, experience. Mm-hmm, and then they go have drinks afterwards. Yeah. It's hilarious. Well, I mean, it's a smart strategy. It works. I don't know how good it is for long term success. It's terrible. And I got into it with somebody on our Facebook page uh, this morning. I should say get into it. I responded. Uh, but you released a blog recently mm-hmm. that was the basically the the pros and cons of what uh, CrossFit mm-hmm. has done for the community. And, you know, there, there's people, and I love people that do this, that, that comment on titles of articles without reading the full mm. article. I think you did <laughs> that still happens. a good job of giving it the credit that it's due. And I think we do a good job of talking about all the positive things. But the truth is this, that uh, a majority of people are getting involved in these classes to lose weight. You mm-hmm. know, very few people are 
uh, are getting involved in any of this stuff because to they compete. Or yeah, right. Like exactly. So most people are joining these types of classes to lose pay, to lose weight. And America does not have a weight loss problem. Every year, millions of people lose weight successfully. Mm. Lose weight. Now, over eighty percent of those people put it all back on in some. So mm-hmm. the problem is not a lack of motivation. And that was this person. Why why throw shade on you know any sort of modality if it's what motivates people to get off the couch? And I said, well, that's because that's not the problem. The problem isn't we lack the motivation to get to a place. It's the way we're going about it is all wrong. Mm-hmm. And that is what we're trying to do here is we're not trying to throw shade on anybody's modality. We're just trying to enlighten the the, the masses. Inform that, the consumer. Exactly. That are, that are sucked and bought into the motivational hype that, listen, Maybe this isn't the best approach for you to lose this weight permanently. It's a, it's a hard thing to understand because if you put yourself in the mind of somebody who's ready to start working out, ready to lose weight, they're in this really motivated, inspired state of mind. And when we're in that state of mind, we tend to overestimate our abilities. So if you say to somebody, you know, oh, you want to start working out now? Yeah, I, I'm, finally, I'm finally ready. How many days a week do you want to work out? Five days a week. You know, what do you want to do? I want to work out hard. What about diet? Oh, I'm not eating sugar anymore. I'm yeah. cutting out all the crap. I'm not going to drink alcohol. And then you ask them, well, what were you, how, were you working out before? No, not at all. What did your diet look like before? Lots of sugar, lots of alcohol. It's like, okay, too, way too big of a change. And right now it feels good because you're in this inspired, motivated state of mind. But that state of mind will change at some point. What will that version of you think of what you, the decisions you're making now? Will it be something you could stick to, or will it be a quick reversal? And that's what ends up happening. It's a quick reversal. Yeah. And so these types of modalities capitalize on the motivated uh, consumer, which you know it's not their fault, by the way. It's all the, the, almost the entire fitness space yeah. does that. They capitalize on that. I mean, watch some of the most popular fitness programs on mainstream TV. Watch The Biggest Loser. It's mm-hmm. all that. It's 100% yeah. motivation, inspiration. It's it's 1% good exercise and good diet. It's all about Speaking of that, I'm giving you guys homework. <laughs> that, no. la- that airs a week from today. Yay. So that goes live, and we have Steve Cook and Erica Fit Love are both the trainers for that, and f- we have to watch that for that exact reason so we can comment on it. All I right. really do want, and I know that uh, you know we, uh, we've each probably expressed our disdain for for the show, and uh, I think it's important because we've talked about that to discipline ourselves to watch the episodes, and then we could talk about them. Mm. And 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 I and I think fitness it's fitness entertainment. I, That's I just hundred percent. I mean, there's there's millions of people watching that, dude. I know. And it's, it's entertainment, fitness. It's that's what it is. And yeah. so you want me to watch it, huh? I do. I want you to get eye cancer. Is what's going <laughs> <laughs> to happen? Oh, it's hard, dude. I, can't. I I, I want to. I want you to watch it because I want. I think we should talk about it. I just think sure. that it, uh, we we owe it to the audience to do that uh, and at least express not just talk shit about it, but express what we see going on. Yeah, in it. That's, and that's and true. so I think it would be good. It starts in a week, Doug. You can hold us accountable. All right, Doug. So maybe we'll watch. Maybe it. we'll watch it in here. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. Throw, yeah. throw popcorn at the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, speaking yeah. of uh, of of cancer. <laughs> oh, oh god! Yeah, wow. Good. Hey, wow. So nice transition. You brought that up. This is a this is this is a huge huge discovery that just got made. So so scientists just found a new type of killer T cell. So this is an immune cell that seems to target all cancers, all cancers. Hmm? So they found a cell in the immune system that. It, if it's if it if it's around cancer, it kills it and doesn't harm any healthy cells. And so they're already doing studies with mice where they're boosting this just this type of of kill of killer T cell, and they're curing cancers at the moment. Dang. What in mice? Yeah, it's like so a Titan T cell. Well, so this could Bro, be that's huge news. This yeah. is huge because one of the big challenges with with treating or fighting cancer is that they're all different. Yeah. So you might have a treatment that works for one, but it doesn't do anything. For another one, um, so it's very, very difficult to to to. It's like finding like a a cure for cancer. For a long time, scientists are like it's not going to work that way because there isn't a single thing. But now they found this killer T cell. This is fascinating. This is the first time we found something now, that seems to kill them all. Do you guys do you guys believe in our time that we'll find a cure? I our, do in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. I do 100. percent And uh, and where do you stand on the the um, conspiracy theorists that believe that we already have it and we're just stupid? Yeah, you think that's yeah. stupid? Yeah, I think it's bullshit because and they say oh it's because of money or whatever. If you discovered the cure for cancer, you'd be one of the richest people on earth. Yeah. And and celebrities and scientists and politicians die from cancer. Nobody's spared. There is no, 
you know, cure people are hiding. Right. Um, it's not uh, just happening to poor people. No, no. Right. I think there is. I think that we will, though, find a, a cure. I think it's going to happen in the next 15 to 20 so years. So I'm really curious about this, this T cell. Like, how do they... So everybody produces this naturally or is this like uh, only found like wh where are they how are they like just now finding this um i don't know too much of the details i just read a single article on it and i've seen lots of other articles so i belong to a lot of uh, science groups on facebook and they're all posting uh different articles talking about this so this is apparently uh, a really big deal right now yeah. um in the in the you know the medical community again it potentially could be a path towards a universal cancer treatment. It's early, but holy cow. Do you guys have any idea what, how like groundbreaking, how much it would shift and change society if we finally had a, a cure for a disease that to this day really doesn't have any, it would be huge. Oh, it would oh, be yeah. absolutely massive. So it's, it's really exciting. What do you stuff. think are some of the uh, unintended consequences that could happen from it negatively? Well, if it's obvi obviously there's tons of positive and the, yeah. I mean, all of us in this room have been affected by mm. uh, directly, right? Somebody who in well, our family that's been, and that I would love to have a cure, but then there's going to be things that happen because of it. What are some of the things that you well, think? Well, if it's a, if they're doing something with the immune system, I don't know, mm. maybe they could trigger some kind of autoimmune response. Yeah, it could be overactive. Uh, maybe the person would need repeated treatments because whatever's giving them cancer in the first place wasn't solved. So, you know, maybe they'd get this treatment and then five years later have to go back and get this treatment. Um, I don't know. The, you know, things tend to adapt and evolve. Maybe it stops working after a certain period of time. But working with the immune system seems to be the best bet because our immune system is pretty damn smart. Um, and if it's your own cells, then it's probably a, a, a good thing. And along those lines on cancer, did you guys know that they are finally, they finally found a link between thyroid cancer and cell phones? Oh shit! Yeah, they did, and now it's now. Here's the link, though. It's not okay. Uh, it's not everybody. Um, it's uh, higher. They found that there are higher rates of thyroid cancer among people with certain genetic variations in specific genes. So they're finding that if some people have this gene variant, and if they use a lot of cell phones, their risk of thyroid cancer uh, goes up. Hmm. Um, and other people probably God, it seems don't. Like need such to worry. a correlation thing, though. You no, know? they've connected it. They seem to have connected it. Really? Yeah, they have. Yeah, they said they examined over 900 people in Connecticut and found that those with a certain single uh, nucleotide polymorphisms mm. were significantly more likely to develop cancer in their thyroid. Um, uh, you know, so in this terms is of due to the EMF or whatever like signals. Right, the radiation is probably coming from that. Yeah, I mean, you've seen such the, a low amount. It is, but over time, and again, yeah. if you have this variation in your gene, I think we're not far from like a the like the advanced version of like twenty four and me, where you can get like you know if you get this whole list of all these these genes that you have, you yeah, potentially formerly have. known as twenty three and me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> is it <laughs> twenty four? We added one. <laughs> is it really twenty yeah. three? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was good, bro. That was yeah, good right that was there. I don't think that's Sal didn't catch it, though. I don't, yeah, think, that's, yeah. I don't think that's a good thing. You know? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, extra chromosomes. We found an extra one. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That was a good catch, bro. Yeah, I, was, I, I, was, I had to get you there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm glad you did. I, 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 Sal, you're normally the one that's all it's over that. 24 yeah. Fitness coming out with new <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gene <laughs> testing. 24-hour gene testing. No, but don't you think that the future will be like we'll we'll have connected all these different things, right? Yeah. And I think it'll be this list like, oh, you should avoid mm -hmm. cell phones or you should avoid this or you should stay away from this on those. Yeah, so. you'll have like a whole blueprint of like what works and best. And that'll probably genetics. be called yeah. 24. I'm sure. So that one will <laughs> be the advanced like version. We'll create that. First question is from Britty3. Thoughts on Biggest Loser Challenges in the Workplace? Oh, I didn't even know this was a new oh, picture. Have you guys this? seen? Look at us. You guys know what these challenges are, right? So mm -hmm. they get like groups of people at work, and we're all going to you know, be in a contest for 90 yeah. days, yeah. see who loses the most weight you know, type of deal. Um, thoughts? What are your thoughts on these? Well, I used, to, uh, I used to run one at 24 Fitness. Mm -hmm. What'd you call it? We call it the Biggest Loser Challenge. Oh, wow. Uh, the difference, though, is that we did not go off of weight. Uh, we measured body fat percentage. Mm. And so it was the, the greatest percentage of change. Mm. Uh, over the, And it was over the course of, I believe we did, 
Do you remember how long I did it for, Justin? We did like three months, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think it was three months long is what we did that's it. Be- that's better, though, because I had a I had a buddy that that did a bet with a group. And our clients fought over who actually won. Really? I remember that. Too. Yeah, so yeah. I, Mine and Adam's clients. So yeah. I had a, I had a buddy who he's belongs, he's an investment banker, and he's got all these buddies that are all investment makers, so they all make a lot of money, and they're all real fat and out of shape or whatever, and they made a bet. It was a three-month bet, $50,000. Wow. Who could lose the most weight? Now, my friend won- but he gamed the whole fucking thing. When he did the weigh-in, he bulked up uh, for it. He drank yeah. soy sauce, was eating salt, like got himself huge pizza, hella all, bloated, yeah, hella bloated. car. Then he cut water, fasted, used the sauna. Yeah. So body fat percentage is a smarter way to measure. Well, no, <laughs> totally. and, and that's for that exact. So you know, we mentioned in the intro about Biggest Loser starting next week. That's one of the things. So the very I've I watched um, the first probably I want to say four or five seasons of Biggest Loser. And the very first season, for those that have, have been fans of the show or watching it, I really liked. I remember when it came out, and I thought this is really cool. This is, it was during a time too when like reality TV is like exploding and shit like mm-hmm. that. I was like, you know, finally like a positive yeah. reality TV. Like the good intention part of it was there in the beginning. Agreed. Yeah. But when there's that much money on the line, it's only a matter of time before enough people catch wind of it and yeah. figure out how to how game it. How do we dramatize it. this? How do we make it more interesting? Exactly. And, that, and that's exactly what started to happen. Seasons two, three, four, and beyond was, the first one was nobody knew what to expect, how you would win, what the competition would really look like. And it was yeah. just like, it was it felt real. Mm-hmm. And it felt like it was a, a good, authentic show. But then at seasons that come later on, people find out, oh, yeah, if you yeah. get as fat as you can going into the show, sodium load like crazy, water load like crazy, you'll shoot your weight up, you know, 20, 30 yeah. pounds, especially for someone who's that overweight. You add somebody somebody who is 300 pounds, yeah. you load them on a, a, a ton of sodium and carbohydrates and gallons of water heading into that. You can manipulate by like yeah. 30 pounds. I want to see, yeah, that, that's one thing I want to pay attention to from watching it, uh, like how they're handling all that, like how they're handling the testing uh, specifically, if it's just going off of weight, like how much of uh, the after effect are they going to show with them now being immersed back in with their family? And like how, you know, like, are they going to follow them a couple months later? Like they all do that all stuff. that. Yeah, they do. So and but they here's the thing. They don't discuss the water manipulation. Or at least they had it in the shows that I'd seen. So okay. they don't they don't discuss that uh, for. Uh, but what I don't know. OK. Is how many of the trainers on the back end are coaching that way? Like, uh, I mean, why dude, wouldn't yeah. you? You win. You want to win. Right. Yeah. You know, why right. Not? right. It is weight. And it's unless it's explicitly in the rules not to do it, which it may be. It may be in the rules that says. Water manipulation is is forbidden or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you, how do you you can't for how could you forbid that? Like I can manipulate your water just by messing with your carbohydrate intake and your water. Intake. Sure, but maybe they'll say things like you have to be hydrated or you know uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So so here's the thing with these challenges in the workplace: they're phenomenal ways to set yourself up for failure. Unfortunately, um, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong about a contest, um, but your chances of succeeding long term. <laughs> After following one of these is very very low, because it's a it's a it's a perfect storm. Yeah. You're it doesn't typically, teach you anything. Typically, you you're you're in a situation where you're not working out, not eating right, and so this gives you the spark to do something. But now you're in a contest, so you really go for it. You do everything you can. You use willpower the whole time. Nothing wrong with willpower in the short term, but willpower does not work in the long term. Behaviors work long term. If you have to use willpower long term, you're going to fail every single willpower time. Willpower is just the spark. No. That's it. And so what happens, they go in there super amped, super motivated, do everything. It's all about willpower. The second the contest is over, it's done. I'm done. I'm over it. And people tend to bounce out of it and bounce out of it worse than they were when they first entered. Now, here's how I'm going to defend it. Would I do one? Hell yes, I would. Because I think I'm a, a master of manipulating my fucking body composition. And if there was a chance for me to win $50,000 amongst sure. my friends or coworkers, I know that I could do that. And what, regardless if I think it's healthy, ideal, or anything like that. So sure. I think the the mindset that you go into it matters everything. So mm-hmm. if you know that, if you know that you're going to be manipulating water, manipulating your, your body composition to win a competition, then it's like a sport and you're treating it that way. Go after the money. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. But if you think that this is a good idea to get yourself in shape, that I don't think that's a no. small. I don't, I don't think it's because to your point, it is, it's setting you up for failure because you're, the way you're going about it is not ideal. It reminds but, me of, have you, you, I'm sure you guys train clients who were like, you know what? One of my goals is to run a marathon. So I'm going to 
that's what I'm going to train for. I'm going to run a marathon. And so they use that as their motivation. Yeah. They train. They change everything about their lifestyle. They do the marathon. After the marathon is over, it's everything's done. Well, I think younger me would have been all about it. Like, you know, this is this is a great way to get people involved and, and to get them moving and to get them motivated and, and, you know, fueled towards the right direction. But, you know, experience in dealing with people and seeing the trends of how this all plays out you like there's a lot more negative to it than positives for me i just see the rebound effect i see people being even more uh likely to not want to repeat that again and so therefore it's like they're in a different place uh about their view of fitness even then from then on out now that being said i mean <clears throat> Are you or are you guys not on the same page that I am that if your family, who probably doesn't have good relationships with exercise and food like we all do, put up a $10,000 bet that who can manipulate or who can lose the most weight? Yeah, if or it's just a game, sure. Right. Sure, well, sure. Would you not? Sure, I mean, sure, Because you guys know that you're probably better at that than any of It's just a game. You know? At that point, yeah. it's just a game. But if you're entering into it and thinking, oh, this is going to get me in shape, this is yeah. going to work for me or whatever... Um, you're going to set yourself up to fail. It's actually a terrible strategy, and if, it, it actually might even make it worse. Yeah, it will. than if you never did it in the first no, place. No, 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 it will. It will. I mean, I, I think it, unless you have that mindset that it's a game, you know, the same way that you yeah. approach training modalities that are like sports, i.e., CrossFits. You know, if you go into it with that mentality, then then by all means, it's you know, playing. I play basketball because it helps me stay in shape, and I love playing basketball. Do I think it's the best way to stay in shape? Absolutely not. So if you go into a competition like this, knowing it's a sport, it's a competition, it's not the healthy way for you to stay in shape. Then by all means, but if you enter it like a, a lot of people do, innocently thinking like, oh, this is a great way to start my new year and, and get in shape and get all the work people yeah, together. Let's get a bunch of people together. Yeah, We're for the do fun of it, then yeah. cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. it's not going to change you. Next question is from Alec Cosmo. What is the best way to train abs? Isometric or concentric and eccentric? Okay. So all, all the, yeah, first break that down for people. Yeah. yeah so I, so there's, there's three types of muscle contractions. Isometric is basically when the muscle's just tense and holding a position example plank yeah, yeah so like like a, like if you were holding a dumbbell you curl it but now you're just holding it up there well right? use an example for abs or a plank, plank a plank right, right? Yeah. So a con use concentric would be the muscle shortening so a crunch coming up in a crunch mm -hmm. eccentric would be the muscle lengthening which would be coming out of a crunch so those are the three types of muscle contractions all three of them are important to train yes. with your midsection they're all three important to train with any muscle right. it's just like any other muscle it is and your your body you know it gets better it's the type of adaptations you get with training tend to be uh, more closely related to the way that you're training. And then there's some general adaptations that kind of come off of that. So if I train my abs isometrically only, I'm going to get really good at isometric contractions. I'll have a little bit of carryover to concentric and eccentric. And the truth, and it's true the other way around, you will get a little bit of general adaptation. Training all of them will mean you'll get better at all of them. Well, and if you want to see the greatest change, then the one that you do the least amount, you should put emphasis sure. on. So if you're somebody who does lots of planks, and that is your you know quote-unquote way you train your abs, and you never do crunches, then doing some crunches would be amazing. Or if you're somebody who blasts on crunches, and they, they crunch, crunch, and they just let their body fall back, fall back, fall back all the time, but they're really good at crunches, they can do thousands of them but they never like slow down the negative and resist it on the way down and focus, do that. So it's like whatever you're doing the most of, or you do, you gravitate towards the most, then focusing on the other ones are, are probably the best thing that you could possibly do. Yeah. Now, as far as building the muscles of the abs so that they're more visible, um, those are going to be your concentric, concentric. and eccentric mm -hmm. you know, reps. That's going to be the, the full range of motion exercises where the abs are squeezing and then moving out into more of a stretch position. The isometric stuff, though, is phenomenal because you are you want your core to be able to tense up yeah. and stabilize your spine for exercises like squats and deadlifts all that and overhead over. presses. Yeah, that follows you in, in basically all movement patterns. It does, so. it does. Now, generally speaking, uh, when you guys think about abs and the majority of people, what are what's some of the single best advice that you've given to clients in regards to that. But well, it, just teaching clients the difference between flexing at the lumbar spine and mm. flexing at the hips. Yeah. Um, I think when people do the, a sit the up- The mechanics of it. Yeah, right. I think when people do a sit up or a leg raise, a leg raise is a real common one. Mm -hmm. They think if the body folds in half that they'll work in the abs. And, and the abs, you'll, you may feel them even in that position because they may be stabilizing. 
But really, if you want to work the abs with full range of motion, it doesn't flex the hips at all. It flexes the spine. It takes your pelvis and it rotates it so that your tailbone tucks and you squeeze. It brings your rib cage closer to your pelvis. That's what they. Yeah. That's what they do. So, like a leg raise, some people will get in that leg raise position and they'll like just bring their legs up and their back is still up against the the pad and it's still straight back or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're not working the abs through a full range of motion. You're working the hip flexors. Yeah, and, and too, like in terms of rotation, because that's another component with that they're responsible for stabilizing. Like just having the ability to do both, like rotate with your hips with it, but then also anti rotate, so your hips stay locked in place. But then you're just your torso is responsible for that rotation. So that's something else that a lot of people just are, you know, going through these things with momentum, and they're they're they're. They're letting their body sort of dictate where they're going without having full control. This helps to kind of promote more control and and center that with your with your uh, torso. I love that we all were thinking three different things because I think all of them are extremely valuable. Uh, I think Sal's is first and foremost uh, understanding the mechanics of it is the most important. Like if you don't know how to contract your yeah, abs absolutely. properly, uh, all the other tips are kind of worthless. Justin, I love the idea of ran, uh, rotation and anti-rotation because it's probably one of the most neglected things that people focus on. And when you talk about longevity and safety and advanced totally. age, like talk about one of the most uh, important things to help protect your your back uh, is is focusing on rotation and anti-rotation. The third thing uh, that I would contribute that I, I remember giving as advice that even myself neglected was loading and heavy mm. ab work yeah uh, abs are so it's so common to see supersets and you know bicycle abs and you know 100 uh, can, you know 100 uh, crunches and mm-hmm. everybody thinks high repetitions the same like similar to calves people uh, think that that's the way to train them for the for the uh, the best results and in fact uh, some of the best results that I ever personally had with training my abs or training clients abs was actually doing five repetitions of slow, slow controlled. controlled, heavy loaded abs. Like, and because most people don't train that way, you tend to see incredible results from yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. man, I tell you what, if you're listening right now and, and focusing on abs, you take those three, uh, those tips and probably see. Well, we did a, a YouTube recovery. video a while ago on uh, long lever crunches on a physio ball. If you do those right, you're going to do maybe 10. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're strong, probably right. less. That's a lot of resistance with your arms like that. Yes, yeah, so you do a good yeah. long lever crunch on a physio ball, slow, full extension, so that you're at the end of it, you're actually arching over the ball and rolling, full rolling the spine like you're saying over it, keeping the hips stationary, so you're not sitting down with your hips, squeezing mm-hmm. the abs, keeping the arms up above your head. That's a lot of resistance. You will develop muscular strong abs with an exercise like that. The real high rep stuff, it's good for endurance. But it's not going to develop the the muscles of the core. But I remember there was a there was a period of time there where it was like planks. Planks was the exercise. That's what yeah. everybody does. Let's just plank all day long. And uh, they have some value for sure. But you you got to do everything. You got to do all of just like you, when you train any other muscle. All right. Next question is from K Craig Twelve. What are your thoughts on trap bar deadlifts? Mark Ripito recently released a video talking about why the trap bar is a poor and unsafe substitute for the barbell. I love this video. <laughs> He's so yeah. salty. I, I love him. Man. I know. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm growing to like really love this guy more and more. And the, he starts the video off with this. Yeah. This is a crap bar. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the military just bought a bunch of these. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think it's, it's you, you don't, you should not compare the two exercises. You should not say to yourself, which one do I do? Because if I do one, I can't do the other one. I think that's the wrong. Yeah. approach. I think that's an approach a lot of people in fitness take where it's like it's either kettlebells or dumbbells or barbells or machines or high reps or low reps. I think they all have value. Actually, I know they all have value. Yeah. The trap bar has tremendous value on its own. I don't think it should replace a straight bar deadlift, yes. but I think it has its own value. Well, and I think his argument was really that. Like he's he was trying to argue how much more valuable like a deadlift was for these very specific reasons, which you know I couldn't really argue against that fact. But to your fact, to your uh, point, like I totally see like a lot of value in the trap bar for completely different reasons. Totally. Well, you have to talk about why he made the video in the first place. Yeah, he made the video in response to what the military is doing currently right now, mm-hmm. which is eliminating the barbell deadlift and replacing it with 
trap bar yeah. deadlifts. And now, do you and guys do you guys know why they did, or do you guys want to guess why? I don't know why, but I have well, probably some, injuries. Have some ideas. Probably That's, a lot yeah. of people were getting hurt trying to deadlift. Yeah, Poor technique. Yeah, because a trap bar is easier to teach than a, than a yeah. barbell. Oh, of course, it, it just is. It's an easier thing to teach. The other part of it is, if you look at athletic coaches, some of the best athletic coaches in the world. They do trap bar deadlifts. Yeah. They say it transfers better to the sport. basketball or yeah, volleyball. Yeah, I mean, for me, okay, so this is where I think we, we all kind of are in similar camps. I love the video, though, I, I and I, I, I agree with him that uh, it's a terrible idea to replace the deadlift uh, because, uh, to your point, Sal, it, it is. It's a different exercise. Mm -hmm. It's a different exercise. It has different applications. Both of them have value. Uh, but to his point, and I agree with him that uh, the trap bar deadlift should not replace uh, a conventional uh, barbell deadlift. They're different. I mean, mm -hmm. the, uh, they're completely different. Uh, in fact, they have very. They have. I think the trap bar deadlift has more similarities to a squat than it has to a deadlift. Mm -hmm. Right. So it shouldn't even be called a deadlift. It should be more like a trap bar yeah, squat. Yeah. His point with that travel in the sagittal plane, like allowing for a little bit more of that. Like you do see that in a squat, and that's why we have the squat. And so right. it's like, you know, I get, I get where he's coming from from a barbell purist perspective with that, but it does also allow. I mean, it's a different, you know, it's a different monster. It's something that I'm recruiting, you know, both anterior and posterior like together so i've done long periods of trap bar deadlifts um when i was searching for that 600 pound deadlift years ago um i avoided the the straight bar for a little while because i was overworking my posterior chain so i picked up a trap bar and it was similar enough i thought to prevent me from losing gains but allow me to train kind of a similar it's different but a similar motion here's what i found with it well, obviously i could lift more weight with a trap bar it's just it's more of a vertical I guess lift my back is a little bit more straight, so I can lift more weight with it. Um, and I noticed that it did strain my lower back less, but I did get a lot of mid upper back activation. So you load up a trap bar really mm -hmm. heavy, and you do some trap bar deadlifts, you still get some really good mid back activation. And of course, it works the legs. You get a little bit more quad activation. Yeah. Um, I noticed with the trap bar, the straight bar. Now, when I did that and went back to the straight bar, <clears throat> I didn't lose any strength on the straight bar, and then I was able to get my straight bar lifts up to the 600 pound target. I find them extremely valuable. I, and they're easier to teach, by the way. When you get a client as a trainer, teaching a deadlift can sometimes be very difficult. Um, there's a process to teaching it. And sometimes what I used to do is I would go, I wouldn't even go to the straight bar, I'd go to the trap bar, depending on the client, because it was an easier way to, to, to train something that was somewhat similar. I also think that, um, I also think this is part of the problem with our space is we get different camps and experts uh, in in exercise and strength training. And it turns into this, uh, you know, intellectual debate yeah. over you, things that really don't fucking matter for 90% of the population. It, they really don't. It's, uh, and it's unfortunate that we, we get here and we get, and we rarely do, we rarely comment on this. I think ripto has got enough uh, street cred and uh, we thought the video was entertaining. So the person who asked this question, they got us to talk about this, but we actually pass on a lot of these questions where people want us to debate uh, another expert in the field that maybe said something that is counter to what we say, because we've talked about the value of a trap bar yeah. before. So I'm sure that's why this person brings this up. And, and the truth is, it really what it ends up doing is it loses the people that we care about most. Uh, I, I think the goal of Mind Pump when we first started this was to, you know, educate the people that are trying to get started with health and fitness and and learn the the proper way to get in shape and to learn the proper way to strength train and the benefits of lifting weights and the things like that and. So this is a community that we're really trying to, we're trying to reach the people that are not going to the gym. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get in an argument with the the fitness gurus right. that have been doing it forever and and fight over. You know what ends up happening when you do this? When you debate what's better, trap bar or a straight bar deadlift? Then you're gonna you're drawing a line in the sand, right? And, and the listeners or viewers or whoever's watching is going to then think, I need to pick one. Right. I have to pick one. Yeah, and the truth is they both have value. That's right, and that's sad because you're going to lose the value of the other exercise. They both have value. That's mm. the real truth. And by the way, this is a strategy that advertisers have used for yeah. years. Pepsi yeah. and Coke did this in the 80s. This is how they got everybody to drink Pepsi and Coke and throw not drink 7-Up and Shasta and all the other drinks. They, gave, they made people think they had to pick. Politics works this way. I have to pick. There's only two choices, one or the other. When we make this debate over these two exercises, which one's better, which one sucks, uh, then people are just going to think, oh, 
I side with Mind Pump. They said the trap bar. Yeah. I side with Ripito. He says the straight bar. So I'm just going to pick one. And then you miss out on all these amazing benefits yeah. of the other exercise. The truth is they both have value. Yeah, I do appreciate like some of these old dogs, though, that, that like stay like they dig their heels into like <laughs> you know those like foundational things that like have been time tested like over you know millennia in, in, in any different like culture like you know deadlifts like like bench press like the ones that like have worked like time in and time out and they want to make sure they keep the purity of it, the mm -hmm. way that it's taught uh you know why the reasoning behind it like everything is like untouched and i, and I get that but then something new like yeah. the trap bar comes along and it's like ah well, he's, they, they don't want to like change is hard well ripto's a smart very smart dude i'll tell you what starting strength was the best workout uh you could get online before maps anabolic 100 percent. you compared his program to all the other bodybuilding routines and there was a stark difference. I remember first seeing it and going, wow, this looks very simple. Yeah. This looks very basic. Yeah, very simple. Follow it and you just you get great results. All these other bodybuilding routines are, are full of crap. It was he really made a phenomenal impact. It was his programs that got people to finally say, the average person to say, Hey, wait a minute, maybe I should train on these core lifts instead of doing all this other fluff. Maybe I should train my full body, you know, a few times a week instead of doing body part splits, it was him. Well, and, and there's, uh, uh, Justin, I'm with you. I can pr appreciate purists and, and the digging the heels in, but I think it's important as experts in the field that, you know, you're careful about what you dig your heels in about. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like what you what you take a hard stance on of, of what's good or what's bad. Yeah, because isn't he like anti-mobility too? Oh, he is? is he? Yeah, I'd have to dig into that. I'm not sure about All that. Right, well, but then, I, I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Again, like I said, I appreciate that they exist because they're on a spectrum. You know, like for me, it's like I, I, I can then like kind of make my own decision accordingly. Like I know where he stands on like something else that's going to come out, and it'll put present an argument that I'm going to think about. Well, and I, I also think that we're, we're speaking to different communities. Yeah, uh, I mean, if uh, I I side with him, if I'm talking to a bunch Just of people, pure strength, yes, yeah, driven people, strength training athletes like only. that want to be strong as fuck, and that's why they follow my channel, and that's what they're interested in. Yeah. And I catch wind that people are stopping doing conventional deadlifts to do trap bar deadlifts because mm. it's fucking easier. Mm. Yeah. And so they're choosing to go that path. I would, I would dig my heels in the same way and say the same thing about the trap bar, but I, I, mind pump isn't that like uh, we're not uh, speaking to just a strength community. We have a plethora of yeah. all different types of people that are trying to get into fitness. We have everything from, super advanced experts and and strength athletes to the total beginner novice person who is clueless about strength training right. and the last thing i want to do is to get into these crazy debates maybe when we first started we would get we probably uh yeah, i think um entertain some of these conversations because it was good for us to gain to gain some traction that could, people could hear us intelligently debate or argue points like this yeah. but I, I don't know i'm very careful about it now because i don't oh, think we, we pre-screen it now because it's like if it doesn't hold any value to your average person typically we don't even really want to discuss yeah, it yeah. well that, and that all being said look here's here's the deal with the trap bar i think uh it's got a lot of value i think we all think that i think Using it in your routine on a semi-regular basis is a good idea. You'll notice gains in your glutes, uh, your hamstrings. You'll get some good trap activation, some good mid-back activation from it. Great for strengthening your grip. Great for athletes. It's great. It's phenomenal for athletes. In fact, uh, I've seen ex athletes train explosiveness with weights, with the trap bar, more effectively than other methods, uh, other barbell and barbell I mean, You look at uh, Max Marzo, you look at Corey Schlesinger, you look at uh, Paul Fabritz, yep. all good, great friends of ours who are some of the best mm -hmm. uh, athletic coaches in the, in the space. All of them utilize the yeah, trap bar. Yeah, they have great points for it. Next question is from Big Daddy Bass. What do you think is overall better for muscular health and longevity? Stretching, foam lert rolling, or mobility work? Mobility. Okay. Well, see, in, you know, mobility work encompasses both stretching, foam rolling, right. and other things. So that this is the reason why I picked this question is I think it's important to explain to people what mobility really encompasses. Mobility refers to your ability to move through a full range of motion and have complete yeah. control with strength and stability through that that range of motion. That means you have good mobility. Now, I know mobility in other circles may be used to just mean range of motion, like, oh, how far can you stretch or how far can you move a joint or whatever? That's your mobility. That's not the way we use it. The way we use it is 
Can you move through that full range of motion but own it? Also own it. Also have strength and connection to it. Now, what are the methods to improve that kind of mobility? They include stretching. Stretching does a phenomenal job at increasing range of motion. It doesn't give you any strength or connection to that range of motion, but it gives you that range of motion. Foam rolling is another great thing that you can use. How does foam rolling work? Well, there's some debate as to how it works exactly, but it does allow people to move better with certain exercises. That way you can strengthen better movement patterns. So if well, I foam roll before I squat, I may squat better, so therefore I'm going to strengthen better squats because of it. Here's where I'm going to challenge you. One of these three things can live without the others. Oh. If you if you have if you have the proper range of motion and you do one of these three things, you can eliminate the other two. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you, well, mobility if work includes all really of them. What do you mean? Foam well, if you, you if, you, foam if, if you do if you have if you can do okay mobility drills like flow sessions sure. like we have in our our hit program, if you can do those properly and with good form, you may never have to foam roll or stretch. Yeah, sure, totally. Now, if you cannot do some of these mobility drills and you're limited, stretching and foam rolling are tools to help you get there. Totally. Yeah. And it, and th and this is so, and, and I'm very passionate about this because uh, you know, I was I'm just recently talking to my my stepdad's uh, new wife and she's about to do hip surgery. And uh, one of the things that I'm stressing to her is that you may get the temporary relief after the surgery. In fact, you probably will. You'll probably feel amazing. Uh, but you're going to be back into this same place if you don't do the mobility work, if you don't work on your internal and external rotation of the hips. Because you're going to keep resting on the joint. Exactly. And so, and I said, but what's great is if you do put the work in to get there and to get these mobile hips, if you just stay up on the mobility drills, you may never have to you know, you know, static stretch or foam roll ever again. Mm -hmm. And why I'm passionate about this is because I've I've watched it happen to many clients and I've experienced it myself mm -hmm. that once I did put all the work in to get that full range of motion up, as long as I did mobility drills that promoted that, the foam rolling and the stretching was well, as I, I could totally speak to that in, in the way I used to train with my clients too. I would have them foam roll before every session. Yep. You know, and I would have them like uh, you know, do some dynamic uh, movements and things to kind of you know get warmed up before I realized like the the true value in, in getting into these mobility drills. It it promotes all those things. Like it, the movement of it is what it it, it promotes the, the strength, the control over it, and really it's it, it's about having access. So if I'm in a in a certain range of motion, I just know that I can I can muscularly uh, command uh, a way to to brace and protect my joint. It depend. Look, it depends who you're talking to, right? So if you have good movement patterns, if you can move through full ranges of motion, you can just lift weights with good form deep squats and deadlifts and Z presses and rows and do that really well and work through full ranges of motion. And you'll probably never have to do a lot of the other stuff. Now, those other things are definitely tools. Uh, mm -hmm. They're tools. If you don't have that kind of mobility, you find you have areas you can work on, you can utilize those tools to help you. You can yeah. utilize yeah. them. And, and good mobility work tends to encompass all of it. You're right. A mobility drill en encompasses stretching and activation throughout the whole movement. You mentioned the the flow drills that we have in in in, in maps hit. Those are ba those are supposed to improve mobility. Go through those and tell me you don't feel lots yeah. of muscle and stretching. What, what I was I forgot to mention. Well, like so the the knots, right? So that's the biggest thing that people like want to attribute is it relieves my knots and you know these things that form these these pressure points uh, on my body if I do the foam rolling and y you come to realize doing these mobility drills it relieve it relieves that stress. It, it like that that pain like alleviates. It prevents them from getting there in the first right. place. Right. That's what that too. that's what it does. And you can if, if again, if you're if you're incredible at uh, at each one of these individually, that you still would have to like for you could be incredible at stretching. Sure. Like you do yoga all the time, sure. but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have mobility, right? You're flexible. You're flexible. You could take the, you can do the splits, but do you have control through that range of motion? Yeah, and that yeah. that's where that's different. So stretching alone by itself is not good enough. No. Foam rolling by itself, foam rolling addresses the temporary relief. It relieves those knots. Oh, okay, now I can actually move a little bit better. So mm -hmm. yes, it's a tool again. But again, foam rolling by itself without anything else doesn't work. But 
good mobility done correctly can live alone by itself. If you own the range of motion, you have control of it. So I'm talking to somebody right now who is in their early 20s. They have no joint pain. They have good mo. They can they can move their joints through full range of motion. They don't want to waste their time stretching and doing foam roll. If, mobility you, work. if you do mobility work, or to your point, Sal, doing full range of motion of all these different exercises that challenges each range of motion on every major joint, you will never have to probably stretch or foam roll. No, no. I mean, again, just having a good range of motion. I mean, <laughs> reality is having a good range of motion without strength is is, is causes In instability. It causes instability. It actually, is a lack of mobility, uh, at least the way that we're describing. I've worked with clients like this. You know, I trained, I've trained a few women who were hyper flexible, hyper. They had long ranges of motion. One of them just did lots and lots of static stretching. The other one was just born that way. And um, they were constantly hurting themselves mm -hmm. because they didn't have enough strength and tension to hold things into place. It was well, loose. Yeah. It, like I was going through all the research and everything when I was looking at isometric training and just isometric training in itself has an analgesic effect. So that it basically they, they proven that it, it alleviates pain. Uh, and, and again, I think this is just, you know, speaks back to the fact that it just creates more stability, your body, like it, it reduces that signal that we need to take care of this. Totally. Uh, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. They're all totally free. So if you need help, burning body fat, you need nutrition help, exercise help, go on mindpumpfree.com, check out all of the stuff that we have that can help you. Download the one that you like best. It costs you nothing. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. Adam can be found at mindpumpadam. And you can find me at mindpumpsal.